In uniform motion problems, we're often interested in two specific points in time, which I call t initial t sub i and t final t sub f. And so we want to find relationships between the position at these two points in time. So the initial position, which we call x sub i, then is equal to the position function evaluated at t sub i. Here's the position as a function of time. So that's x naught, our initial position, plus our constant velocity, which we just call v, times t, our sub i, our initial time, which is just some value. Our final position, then, is the same thing, except evaluated, our position function, evaluated at the final time, which is the initial position, plus the constant velocity times the final time. To find a relationship, Let's take the difference between the final position and the initial position. So the final position is just the initial uh, x naught, the position at t is equal to zero, plus the velocity times the final time, minus the position at t is equal to zero, minus the velocity times the initial time. The position at t is equal to zero cancels and we have velocity final time minus velocity initial time. I can factor out the velocity and I get velocity t final minus t initial, which we've called just delta t, the time interval, v delta t. This gives us a very useful relationship between our final position and our initial position. Our final position is equal to our initial position plus the constant velocity times the time interval. If you look at this expression, note that it looks very similar to just the function as a function of time, but it is very different. This is a function that's defined over all time. This is just a relationship between very specific values. This first value here is the position at t final. This is the position at t initial. This is the velocity and this is a specific time interval. So this is not a function, but this is an, a relationship between parameters at two specific points in time that will help us solve problems. So let's do an example. Alice is 1400 meters from home and runs to it at 8 meters per second. How close is she in one minute? This gives us an, an opportunity to practice a problem-solving strategy. So let's just take it from the beginning. We'll first start with a picture. So we have some home, some house, and Alice is 1,400 meters away. So there's my home and Alice. So here's my picture. She's going to be running towards home. Let's get a coordinate system, we can which needs a zero and a positive direction. I'm going to put my zero at home and make positive this way. It doesn't have to be, but this is my choice. I'm going to give it a coordinate x. So one minute later, Alice is closer, and I want to know how close she is. So I want to know this distance one minute later. So I have a picture now. I have a schematic, a coordinate system. I'm going to start listing the things I know and the things I want to find out. Well, I'm going to identify two points in time. The first point in time is when she starts running. My final point in time is one minute later. That's what I want to know how close she is. I know from the context of my problem that there's some t initial. I can start my zero whenever I want, so I'm going to start my t initial at, at time is equal to zero. My problem tells me that the final time is one minute later, so in seconds, t final is 60 seconds. And I know that her initial position, which is, I call x sub i initial, is 1400 meters. And her final position is, in fact, unknown. I'll call that x. And in fact, this is what I want to know. This x location, since I've established my zero of my coordinate system at the house, the x location at t final is going to be how, f how close she is to the house. So this is, in fact, what I want to find. Is there any physics I can apply to this problem that can relate the, what I know to what I don't know? Well, of course. 
because I know that she's running at a constant velocity, this is a uniform motion problem. And I have a relationship between two points in time for uniform motion that tells me my final position is equal to my initial position plus my constant velocity times my time interval. And I know my time interval because I know my initial time here, delta t, which is the difference between these two, is just 60. I know my velocity, that's 8 meters per second. I know my initial position. Let's be careful, my magnitude is 8 meters per second. I haven't listed what my velocity is. Let's get that down here. What is my velocity? Velocity is a vector, remember, so it has a magnitude of 8 meters per second, and I have to figure out what direction it's going, and it looks like she's running in the negative x direction if positive x is that way, which means the velocity vector is a negative 8 meters per second. See how important it is not to skip steps here that you write down everything that you know before you get into trying to solve the equation. We might have been confused and listed that as a positive number. So now let's go ahead and try to solve this. My final position I just called x. My initial position was 1400. My velocity was negative 8. And my time in seconds was 60 seconds. And so that's negative 480. 1400 minus 480 is 920 meters. So her position in 60 seconds is 920 meters, which in fact is how far away she is from home, so that is the right answer. And does it make sense? Well, it's certainly smaller than 1400, and so it makes sense that that's a reasonable answer. Note that if I had screwed up and just put positive 8 in here, I would have gotten a number larger than 1400. And when I went to check and, and found that, hey, my final answer was larger than the initial answer, I would have known I made a mistake. I want to do another problem with two objects. Two balls are 10 meters apart and roll toward each other at 1.5 meters per second and 3.5 meters per second respectively. Where do they collide and how long does it take? Remember, our goal in solving these problems aren't, isn't really to solve it as fast as possible. As much as it is to practice a problem-solving strategy so we can solve harder problems in the future more quickly. So let's start with our picture, always the picture. So we have these two balls that are rolling towards each other. One at 1 1.5, well let's call this one 1 1.5 meters per second, and the other one going this direction at 3.5 meters per second. And eventually they're going to collide. I'm going to predict that they're going to collide eh, somewhat over here, right? Somewhere closer to the 1.5 meter per second. It's not going to get as far. I just don't know how, how far that is. So I need a coordinate system with a zero and a direction. I'm going to put my zero at this one, for lack of a better place, and I'm going to put my positive direction towards the other ball, and I'll call that my positive x direction. Here's my zero. So now I have a picture, a schematic, a coordinate system, and now I want to start listing what I know and what I don't know. So I'm interested in two points in time. My initial point in time, is when they first start. And so I'll call that initial time t is equal to zero. The final time is when they collide. I don't know what that is. That's one of the things I'm trying to find. So I'll just call that t. I know the, the initial position of each ball. So I can't just call it x sub i because I have two of them. So I include another subscript x sub i1 for the initial position of ball one. We'll call this ball one and this ball 2. So the initial position of ball 1 is equal to 0. We know that. And now the initial position of ball 2, which I'll call x sub i2, is equal to 10 meters, given this coordinate system. Notice that all of this depends on our choice of coordinate system, so we had to get the picture in the schematic out there first. What are the final positions of ball 1, which I'll call x sub f1? That's an unknown. That's right here but it's some value, I'll just call that x. And what's the final position of x2? That's also an unknown, except what we do know is it's the same value as ball 1. That's information we extract logically from the context of the problem. We were told that in our second point of time that we're interested in, 
they collide. And in our particle model, while we represent these as points, when they collide, they both occupy the same point in space. The final position and of each ball is the same during the collision. And that's unknown, and that's one of the things we want to find. So what else do we know? What about the velocities? The velocity of ball 1. It's a constant, so there's no initial or final, so I'll just call it v sub 1. Well, it has a magnitude of 1.5 meters per second, and it is going in the positive x direction, given my coordinate system. And the velocity of ball 2, it has a magnitude of 3.5 meters per second, but it is going in the negative x direction, so I identify that with a minus sign. What sort of physics applies to this problem, and what sort of relationships does that give us between what I know and what I don't know? Well, uniform motion <laughs> applies to this problem as surprise, surprise, because both objects have a constant velocity. What sort of relationships does this give us? Our uniform motion relationship, which is right here, gives us a relationship between the initial and position, initial and final position for a given object. So I'll have two of those for each object. The final position of 1 is equal to the initial position of 1 plus the velocity of 1 times the time interval, and the time interval is just t, since the initial time I've just said was 0. Remember, this t isn't an independent variable from a function. It represents just this time interval. So the final position of 2 is equal to the initial position of 2 plus the velocity of 2 times the same time interval. The time interval is the same for both particles. I think I can solve this problem, and so I'm going to start plugging in my numbers now to simplify my expressions. Final position of 1, I'm just calling x, and that's equal to the initial position of 1, which is 0, plus the velocity of 1, which is 1.5, times the time interval, which is, I don't know, which is what I'm trying to find. My second final position is equal to x, because it's the same, is equal to its initial position, which is 10 meters, plus its velocity, which is negative 3.5, times the time interval, which is also t. So I have two equations and two unknowns, and so I should be able to solve from this first expression. I have x is equal to 1.5t, so I can substitute that into the second equation, and I get 1.5 times time is equal to 10 minus 3.5 times time, or 5 times time is equal to 10, or t is equal to 2 seconds. Well, that's great, and now I can plug that back in, say, to here, and x then is equal to 3 meters. And I found out where they collide and when they collide, which is exactly what I needed. So finally, we have to check to see whether it makes sense. Okay, well, 2 seconds, that that's, that could be reasonable. I don't have much to say. Three meters certainly makes sense. It's, it's less than five, and we thought it would collide on this half of the picture. Given the diagram, those answers make sense.